I want to switch quickly to governors because we have a, we have something here, the a result in the state of Pennsylvania where the Democrat uh, Tom Wolf has defeated uh, the incumbent Republican Tom Corbin. And this is one of the things we were talking about earlier in the night, Matthew Dow, this idea that uh, this anti-incumbent feeling could blow back against some Republicans. Yeah, I think we're, we're going to see throughout the night as we see these races, Mitch McConnell wins and other Democrats win. And then in, in this race, a Democrat takes this is we're going to see a mixed result, but a very clear message. And so we'll see Democrats win governor's races, Republican win some Senate races. We'll see what happens in the House. But I think as you look at everything, the message is clear. The country is not in favor of incumbents right now, whether it's a senator or a governor. And they're not in favor of either political party right now. They're looking for something else. They're actually looking for leaders they think get the job done. You know, and that, that brings to the issue of business people. Now, Tom Wolf, the uh, the Democrat here, a successful business person, spent $50 million uh, in this campaign. But, Nicole Wallace, let me bring you in on this. One of the things we're seeing Democrats do against Republicans, mm -hmm. Republican businessmen running for office, most especially uh, Michelle Nunn running against David yeah. Perdue in Georgia, is making their business record. They're putting that on the ballot uh, as well. She talked about him outsourcing jobs. Which is funny because I think polls show that in, in a non-specific context, people want politicians who know how to run things, who want to know how to run businesses. And you were talking about the competence question with Martha and John Carl earlier. And this underpins, I think, a lot of the discontent and the dissatisfaction with Washington and, and with the Democratic Party. There's a feeling that not only do they uh, do things that I don't agree with, but that they don't execute with any competence. So to me, some of this is in the way that campaigns are run, and some of these guys didn't do as good of a job defending their business record. I think the minute you act, you, you let the Democrat put you on the defensive, it becomes a liability instead of an asset. And I think that's what happened with Purdue. David? Yeah, no well, question. I think, but Wolf, you know, Wolf. Uh, runs a family business, uh, you know, treats his workers well. There's a difference. I think voters don't just say, oh, you're successful in business. They say, is that someone who's going to treat people like me well? And this, you know, Mitt Romney got on the wrong side of that question. But let's actually show. He ran an ad based on that. Let's show it. Mm -hmm. Closed down, it was pretty much devastating. I don't think David Perdue understands what happens to the people. They were running as fast as they could with as much money as they could get out of the company and just pretty much left us there hanging. <laughs> David Perdue looks out for his sale. All we were. This is actually the David Perdue I was just talking about uh, in Georgia. And, and, and Bill Chris, let me bring he you in on this because, you know, you, this is something we saw in the 2012 campaign again against Mitt Romney. And you've been warning for a while now that this is something Republicans have to be careful about. Look, I think David is absolutely right in this. You can be a wealthy businessman and people don't hold it against you. And maybe there are some ads attack you for outsourcing. You can overcome that if you have a positive economic message going forward that explains how you're going to help the middle and working class. Mm -hmm. If you have an economic growth message, if you have an actual sort of populist economic uh, message, if you don't, then you're just playing defense and then you're the rich guy who it is paying a 40% income tax. That was the moment in the campaign, the Romney moment, I think, which shows how vulnerable you can be. You're paying, what, 12, 14% yeah. on your income taxes. And instead of saying, I am, because that's the law. But you know what? That's President Obama's the president. The Democrats control the Senate. When I'm president, we're going to change the tax law. And I'm happy to pay more mm -hmm. if we can get more economic growth and so forth. Instead, he just said, well, I did what the law required me to do. I didn't do anything wrong. So it, the key is the message going mm -hmm. forward. I don't think being a wealthy businessman disqualifies you. And Tom Foley uh, running for governor in Connecticut will be another so. way, another race for us to watch tonight to test all of our theories. Because he, his... He didn't pay any income tax. A very low percent, right? He lives in Connecticut. Come on. But uh, <laughs> uh, that was a joke. I live in Connecticut. I live in Connecticut. We have a Democratic governor. We pay taxes, lots of them. But I think that we we watch how individualized this is, and I think Republicans especially need to pay close attention. I can't think of a Democrat who who had this used against them, but I, I think watching these races and, and taking the right lessons from them is important for, I, you know, I think business leaders can make great candidates if they do what Bill just suggested. They can make terrible candidates if they don't defend their record.